help the Troy Worden Legal Defense Fund. Folks, help Troy Worden of the Berkeley College Republicans combat Yvette Falarca and therefore BAMN and their allies Antifa refuse fascism and other terrorists. And basically stand up for the civil rights of each and every U.S. citizen. Folks, I received the following private message from Troy Warden, but I believe it's okay to read this off to you. So here it goes. Quote, this is the real deal. We're going after BAMN and have already had our first hearing this past Friday with the second schedule for October 13th. We're planning to get this out on Fox News soon, Tucker, Hannity, etc., and other conservative media outlets as well. We have a good case given Falarka's second arrest this past Tuesday and plenty of evidence and witnesses. It's not free, so any contribution will definitely help. And then I was given a link to the following. And by the way, folks, I'm not a conservative. I am not right wing. I'm not Republican. I think Hannity is an easily demonstrable liar. It's just it's easy to prove that he's just disingenuous and that he lies all the time. And I know this because I used to listen to him and other conservative talk show people like Rush Limbaugh for many hours every day at this job I used to have. And it just becomes so predictable. If you listen to these people speak enough, it's just so predictable. Their bullshit is so predictable. And they just flat out lie, use logical fallacies, misdirection, and otherwise just don't actually engage with the subjects they're dealing with with intellectual honesty and accuracy. Sorry, this is a fact. Fox lies all the time. Not that CNN doesn't. I mean, I think CNN may actually be worse now, which is really tough. It's tough to beat Fox in the dishonesty category, but there you go. You know, we have dishonest idiots on both the left and the right. But see, what matters to me is civil liberties, okay? The Berkeley College Republicans, they stand up for civil liberties. The Berkeley Patriot, they stand up for civil liberties. Patriot Prayer, they're Christian. I'm not. But they stand up for civil liberties. So I support civil liberties. By extension, I support this campaign. Oh, and one more thing, folks. College students should not have to defend the entire nation from people trying to destroy it through taking away civil liberties. They should be concentrating on their college schoolwork. They shouldn't be out there trying to raise money for their legal battles after being legally harassed by these communists, these traitors, these terrorists, these psychotic cult members. They shouldn't have to deal with this crap. They should be concentrating on their schooling. But no, they're forced to deal with this crap. And so, you know, that's why we should help these people out. So, Troy Worden Legal Defense Fund. Zero dollars raise of $100,000 goal. Oh, that's pitiful. Zero backers. Well, let me be the first. And let's see here. I'll show you how to do this while I do this here. But I'm not going to show you the amount I give. Because I'm poor and it's embarrassing. All right, so let's read this. Yvette Falarka, the leader of By Any Means Necessary, has served me with a restraining order to stop my conservative free speech activities at Berkeley, and the hearing is coming up soon. I need your help. Now, by the way, Yvette Falarka is not actually the leader. That would be Shanta Driver. But, I mean, she she's definitely way up there, that's for sure. And she's the public face of By Any Means Necessary, for sure. I mean, she's their, you know, she's their militant chihuahua out there barking up a storm all the time and biting people's ankles. Who is Yvette Falarka? Well, actually, her real name is Yvonne Capistrano Falarka, but I digress. Yvette is the 47-year-old violent, disgruntled communist leader of By Any Means Necessary, a dangerous left-wing organization. Okay, now here's another thing. I would characterize them as far left, not just left. And by the way, this is not about conservative free speech. It's about free speech. So here you go. I can disagree with these people, and I still support their civil liberties, and I'm trying to support them financially here too. So anyway, I digress. Let's go on. Whose platform includes open borders and reinstating affirmative action by any means necessary, including violence. BAMN members advocate violence against quote-unquote fascists, and they call Berkeley College Republicans and conservative author Ben Shapiro quote-unquote fascists. Yvette, alongside her cult followers, threw a public tantrum by setting the campus ablaze and vandalizing local businesses over Milo Yafalofikis' speaking engagement at UC Berkeley in February 2017. Yes, I know that's not his real name. I'm just kidding. In June 26, 2016, Yvette was filmed punching an individual in Sacramento at a rally. She was arrested in August 2017 and charged with assault, inciting a riot, and participating in the Sacramento riot. She was out on bail. Now, by the way, now, I have to say here, everybody's talking about how she punched this guy here.
but nobody seems to understand that she does the following here. Okay, that's Yvette in the circle. She's charging at people. She's attacking people. Now here's Yvette ignoring somebody who may have been uh, hermitly damaged by this blow. See, she doesn't care. She's like, ah, whatever. And then Yvette did this here. And then wait for it. This all happened right next to her comrades throwing bottles of acid. Okay? Watch the liquid turn red, which indicates that it is likely an acid. Okay? So this is the people we're dealing with. These people are dangerous. They're funny. They're comical. They're mostly impotent and ineffectual. However, they do have the potential to be very dangerous. A very weak person can hurt you with a gun or with a bottle of acid. So it doesn't matter that they're laughable. They're still, at least potentially, dangerous. Anyway, moving on. Yvette was suspended from her job teaching school children at Martin Luther King Jr. Middle School, ironically named, in Berkeley in 2016 after multiple allegations of attempting to indoctrinate the children with her left wing ideology. Now again, it's not very intelligent, sorry Joy, but it's it's not very smart to just say it's left wing. That kinda kind of shows that you're not making distinctions that are very real and significant, but whatever, moving on. Lying to administrators, insubordination over instructions about keeping her political activism separate from her job and other serious transgressions dating back to 2009. She was arrested again on September 27th in Berkeley for assault and resisting arrest. She's out on bail again. Someone is footing her bill to engage in violent disruption. That's that's for sure. You can't pay for all this stuff on a teacher's salary. What does Yvette do? What does Yvette do now that she is out on bail? She harasses conservative students on campuses and files frivolous restraining orders. She falsely claims that the Berkeley College Republicans harass her, stalk her, and intimidate her, among other phony accusations. She has an out-of-state Detroit lawyer, Shant the Driver, who flies into California to help her abuse the courts this way. Now, by the way. I'm not sure about this, but I'm pretty sure it's Shant the Driver is the cult leader over Yvette Falarka. You see, it starts with Shant the Driver brainwashing people like Yvette Falarka, Tanya Kapner, etc. And then people like Tanya Kapner and Yvette Falarka turn around and do it to others. And then it becomes this whole big pyramid chain of command. At the top is Shant the Driver. Now, in the Oakland, Berkeley, etc. area, Yvette is pretty much the leader. But let's move on. We're asking for your help to throw the books at her and to impose court sanctions on her for wasting court time and making false accusations against students. Well-funded groups on the left are supporting Falarka's cause. The accused students need your help to fight back and even the score in court, including filing claims against Falarka and her crew for their illegal conduct interfering with the rights of the Berkeley Republican students. And... You know, quite frankly, they're against everyone's rights when they do that. Please support the Berkeley College Republicans and I here so that we have the resources to fight these malicious, false, and reprehensible accusations and to go on to obtain justice and damages against Falarka and her associates. So there you go, folks. So scroll down, click that link, please donate, and I thank you very much. You know what I say, peace for the peaceful, tough love, equality of opportunity, not of outcome, and freedom for those who respect the freedom of others. Thanks for watching. A wave of college protesters attempting to shoot down a conservative speaker. This time it was at NYU. Just one day after rioters at UC Berkeley set off fireworks and smashed windows are proving the point of the millions of people who voted to make America great again. Here now is Troy Warden. He is a Berkeley junior and a member of the Berkeley College Republicans. First of all, you self-identify on the Berkeley campus as a Republican. What's that like? Do you get threats? Well, thank you for having me on, Melissa. But yes, it's extremely contentious to be a Republican on campus. There's not a day that goes by since Trump has won the election that we Republicans don't face discrimination. People spit at us. People call us names. We have multiple members who've been punched in the face multiple times. 
Just yesterday, two of our members were assaulted by two people who got out of a car. So we don't feel safe here on campus. This is about building a militant integrated movement that's independent, organizes masses of people, and takes militant direct action to stop it. Prosecutors charged Falarka with one count of felony assault and two misdemeanor counts of inciting and participating in a riot. I was almost beaten up during uh, the February 1st Milo Yiannopoulos riots, and she refused to acknowledge them and actually said not all violence is equal. She, she suggested to her supporters that in some cases, violence is completely acceptable. This event has only made me more resolute in continuing to stand up not only for conservative principles, but also for my constitutional right to free speech.